Hi, and welcome to Interview with a Geek. I'm your host, John Knight. On this episode, I interview gamer, actress, and unicorn, Claire Grant. Please note, this week's program is audio only. Uh, tonight's program, Interview with a Geek, I've got the one and the only Claire Grant, actress, gamer, and unicorn. First time I've been able to say that. <laughs> I actually have a real unicorn on here. Uh, thanks for being on the show, Claire. Um, first of all, um, amongst your list of things I was perusing on your career, the one that uh, just got my interest recently was your role as Lats Razzy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. On Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Um, I was really excited about that. My character is a bounty hunter, and she works with Boba Fett. So, as a Star Wars fan, it was one of the greatest joys of my life. Wow. Um, I have to say that uh, I too am a Star Wars geek. Um, going back. <clears throat> well, let's just say 1977, all right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm dating myself here, but that's okay because I was in the theater when it came out and I could actually read at the time. So, that being said, uh, that is very cool. Um, I actually geeked out about when you mentioned that on uh, Twitter. Um, so, and working with Boba Fett, what's it like? I, I, I can't believe I'm actually asking you this. So, what is it like to work with Boba Fett? Okay, I have to warn you, don't say anything else because I'm actually behind in my Clone Wars watching, so no spoilers, but... Uh, no spoilers. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, that, that's just awesome. I'm truly geeking out. All right. Um, I had to bring that up. That's just that's just too cool out to. Um, the other thing I wanted to t uh, talk to you about is your obvious association as founder and, and member in good status, I imagine, with Team Unicorn. What else have you guys been up to? I understand you guys hit a lot of the cons on the circuit these days. Uh, and in and, and, and PAX East just this past weekend, you guys were playing uh, Magic the Gathering. What else have you guys been up to? Um, well, as far as going to play at the cons, um, yes, we just came back from PAX East, and Magic wanted us to be one of their, like their official pro celebrity team to play against the fans. Um, and alongside their actual pros, who are awesome. And then the weekend before that, we were in Seattle for Xbox, and we were promoting their new game, uh, Star Wars for Connect, which is a lot of fun. So those are things that we like to do ourselves. We love Connect and play our Xboxes more than PlayStation. Um, and... You know, I've been playing Magic for a really long time <laughs> and got the girls into Magic. And so it kind of seemed like, yeah, they want to come play Magic for the weekend? Absolutely. That's awesome. Very, 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 very cool. Well, I know, like I said, some of the people listening to this and other folks out on the internets uh, know you from your videos. Um, uh, you've also been at least cameoed in one other web series, and that would be The Guild. Um, yeah. I'll say that's another uh, another web series I'm a huge fan of. Um, now I have to ask, how how did you get cast as Red Master Chief? Um, well, we're friends with Felicia, and she just asked if we wanted to cameo. 
so we did. <laughs> okay, I've got to ask. So, was that your armor, or was that somebody else's that you got to borrow? That was somebody else's armor. Uh, I'm not. I'm not so cool as to have Master Chief armor hanging out in my closet, even though I wish I was that cool. Hey, you got to be careful, because last time you said something like that about Lego, somebody took care of that for you. That's all I'm saying. I know, right? Well, I do have a closet full of other costumes. They just don't happen to include Master Chief. <laughs> Fair enough. Which brings us to another topic. All right, cosplay. Is this just something that you got into on the sidelines, or you've been into for a while? I've been into it for a while. Um, I've always... I've, I've, I've been a fan of... Um, when I, I don't read comics as much as I did when I was in college and just out of college and in junior high. I didn't really read any comics in high school. Um, but uh, I was really obsessed with Sailor Moon. And when I was in college, I was working in a costume shop in, in, at the theater that I was um, doing stuff with for school. And I discovered that I really, really enjoy making costumes. Um, it was kind of therapeutic for me. I, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's because in order to do it right, you have to take X amount of time and follow these steps just right. And, and, and all the preparation makes such a big deal, and, and you just have to focus on that. So I, I liked that. And I got really into making the costumes um, for that department, and then I just decided one day that I needed a Sailor Moon costume, and uh, I, and this is like back in um, maybe uh, 1999, 2000 maybe, and I decided that I really needed a Sailor Moon costume for no other reason that I just needed to feel like her sometimes, and so I used my little uh, costume shop skills and built a costume, and I was right, it felt awesome. <laughs> and so then I started making other costumes. The next one was obviously uh, a Jedi costume, and then I made a Star Trek costume, and then, and then it just started growing from there. I think my next one was Laura Croft, and then I made Han Solo, which um, I let both two other actresses wear on camera. I let Jamie Alexander uh, wear the Han Solo costume when she and I did a Han Solo versus um, Indiana Jones short for uh, My Little Bint Amelia, um, obviously Indiana Jones won. And <laughs> then I let Michelle wear it for our Geek and Gamer Girls video. So that was the costume in Geek and Gamer Girls. That was your handiwork. Yeah, it absolutely was. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I will watch that video with new newfound appreciation for your skills. That's awesome. Thanks. Very, very cool. I, uh... I got into cosplay actually only fairly recently. Uh, when I was a kid, uh... Uh, my mom and I made our, my own Halloween costumes, but as far as uh, other than October 31st, I didn't get into it until uh, just a few years ago. So uh, between uh, Pirates and Steampunk, I really haven't moved beyond those two genres, so I may have to branch out. But Pirates are awesome, so who can argue with that? But, uh, pirates are cool. Um, I, I'm really lucky that I married someone who enjoys all the same things that I do and allows me to have know, a closet full of silly hats and costumes and pirate eye patches and <laughs> all the fun things that, um, you know, that I like, I like to have. And, and it's, it's fun that he, he likes that I like that stuff and lets me do whatever I want with it. I think I think that sort of attitude is very is very important if you're going to uh, be in a relationship with a geek. I think that's just yes, it is. I, I think that's very important. That's very good. Uh, it's a very good lesson for our listeners out there. Um, well, another and this may seem random, other than I just got done um, uh, feeding my coworkers today seven pounds of pulled pork. Um, that is the topic of barbecue, and I understand yeah. you're from the great volunteer state of Tennessee. Is that correct? I was born uh, just north of y'all, up in Kentucky. Oh, wow. And I know both the states, uh, and, and my other state that I lived in for a while, Texas, uh, ha has their own... Texas for a while. Yeah, has their own traditions of barbecue, and I wanted to get your... And this isn't for an argument or debate. I love all barbecue. I'm very open-minded when it comes to barbecue. But I wanted to get your take on it, because what, how would you define um, Tennessee barbecue? Um, well... There's, for me, there's a few uh, key defining 
words for barbecue. One, what type of meat it is. And so for me, the only thing that you barbecue is pork. I don't believe in barbecue chicken. I don't believe in barbecue beef, even though I know people will hate me for both of those things, especially the brisket lovers out there. But it's all about the pork for me. And it's also, you know, the other key thing when it comes to barbecue is what type of base ah. you use for the barbecue sauce. And for me, it's all about that vinegar-based barbecue sauce. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to ask this. Uh, you can either give this publicly or offline, but I am looking for a good vinegar-based barbecue recipe in all seriousness. So if you have one you're willing to share, please do. I will, uh, like a good place to get the vinegar-based barbecue? Uh, either a good place to get some or if you know a recipe for a good... I don't... My family, that's, I wish barbecue was something that was in my family, but it's just not. Okay. Um, I could tell you how to make all kinds of other awesome Southern food, but... <laughs> Not, <laughs> none of the women in my family have mastered barbecue. All right. Um, and we're a predominantly female family. <laughs> All right. Well, I will. Uh, I'm. I'm. I may. I may ping you later for some other southern recipes. That is one thing yeah. that that is one thing I have been tapping back into is my uh, <clears throat> southern roots. So. I got to put um, one of my family recipes in a uh, southern cookbook last year, and that was secretly very exciting for me. Oh, that's awesome. Which which well. May I ask which book? Yeah, um, I think it's the... Let me check real quick. Sure. It's called... Hmm. Maybe I don't have it. That's okay. Well, through the the magic of post-editing and the internet, we can add that to the, the notes. No, it's called The Country Cookbook. Oh! Awesome. I will. I, I have a collection of cookbooks, so when I say this, I'm very sincere. I will get a copy of that. That's awesome. <laughs> now, which recipe? Did, which recipe did you add? Um, don't laugh at me. I, I'm I not. Did, um, I think I gave them two recipes. One of them went. One of which is um, the recipes for sausage balls, which were um, something my grandmother used to make. I, I love, and they're probably incredibly unhealthy for you, but I kind of can't. I, I just love them. This is me not laughing. I am not laughing. <laughs> and as and, and, and as a semi-foodie, I will say that sounds awesome. So, yes. They're, they're pretty awesome. That sounds awesome. I, I will definitely look forward to looking at that recipe. That's awesome. Um, so I, I have to say, uh, I, I think you would have enjoyed my pulled pork today. Um, I will say this. I actually I kind of threw a little twist in there. I will recommend to you and any of the listeners. Um, I actually used, uh, it was not a vinegar-based. Uh, it had, had a bit of vinegar in it, but it wasn't truly the, the what you're describing as a vinegar-based or anyone who's familiar with it. It's not a strong vinegar-based. But uh, yeah, it was actually a... Te- not strong, but... Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. More than, more than, let's say, corn syrup or other things. Um, right. th- this was actually a Texas brand barbecue sauce, and I, I'm not getting any promotional funds from these folks, but when I lived in Austin for a couple of years uh, back in the late 90s, uh, Stubbs Barbecue, uh-huh. they have a, a, a very nice, and they literally call it Stubbs Spicy. It has no other moniker or description of that, but uh, uh, put a bottle of that with a couple pounds of, uh, of uh, pork butt and slow cook it for 12 hours. It's all good. So rec- wow. recommend that. Very easy. Easy meal. Okay, enough about culinary arts today. Uh, I had a quick question for you, and and, and this is something that's near and dearer to me and uh, why I actually started the show is I like geeks. I am a geek. I'm a nerd as well, and uh, I don't want to get into any debates uh, or semantics as I have often done with people about what is a nerd versus a geek, but what comes out of of reading about uh, Team Unicorn and that, you know, geek girls, you know, gamer girls don't exist you know, necessarily. They are the proverbial unicorn. And I, I guess I wanted to ask you if you could comment on, you know, what are your feelings behind, um, you know, I guess at the time when you guys founded Team Unicorn up through today, um, how do you think uh, people's perceptions of, of geek girls uh, has changed, if any, over that time period? Well, um, I think, I mean, let's be honest. If we had made that video 10 years ago, um, 
I, I, I agree. Um, my, my take on it is, and you know, I'm you know I'm, I'm kind of blushing when I say this, but I think you know Team Unicorn in some way has a, a, a bit of a legacy in helping sort of make a beachhead and make a statement about that. I, I, I personally believe that. I don't know what your feelings are, but I think you guys, uh, your your presence uh, in the media online. And all the various things you've been involved with, I think you've um, you've definitely been behind the drumbeat of making sure that geek girls uh, were not to be ignored. So. Well, you know, we we want to put out that it's okay for women to um, you know to be proud of who they are, and no matter what they're into or what they look like, um, you know, just. You know, be strong, like what you like. It's, it's. You know, we try to, we try to make it. Um, we try to make women feel like they can stand together as a team, and we try not to feel, make guys feel like they're excluded from some all girls club. You know, we kind of want everyone to just feel like we're all on the same team, and it's okay to be strong and and everyone is sexy and why not be proud of that and you know let it all fly <laughs> i couldn't agree more couldn't agree more that being said it's been a little chilly today i have not worn my utila kilt and my uh any of my steampunk stuff outside lately so i'm just saying <laughs> weather weather you know being part of that i'm just saying you know be, be, be smart about it you know dress for the weather that's all i'm saying but no oh, um i absolutely agree <laughs> i uh, Uh, then yeah, yeah. Uh, no offense to my uh, former uh, state of Michigan, but yeah, it's cold up there. It snowed today. I'm glad I'm farther south. I'll leave it at that. Um, it snowed today up there. I uh, yeah, on my Twitter feed, I had uh, let's just say a overwhelming flood of folks on Twitter and Facebook, uh, just literally saying, "I'm turning around from the window. I'm closing the blinds. It's snowing up here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yep. It's not unheard of here in the Midwest for that to happen. I remember when I was a kid, it's snowing uh, on Easter. Uh, when I was when I was a kid, but yeah, Michigan, up, yeah, not too not too shocking. I was wow. not surprised. I was personally not surprised. Um, okay, I'm going to ask about a current project. Uh, if you could tell me actually where you guys are at in production, I would like that. And also, if you can share any tidbits about the much uh, anticipated sequel to Saber, Saber Two, Return of the Body Wash. Uh, Team Unicorn, uh, and then personal, whichever. Um, well, as far as Team Unicorn goes, uh, we are, we're working on, um, we're developing a, a television show that we hope goes to a very specific network, and, um, we're just in the development phase of that, and it'll, it'll be a while before anything happens with that, but in the meantime, we are going to make a couple of um, other videos that won't detract from our larger project that we're holding out for that is going to encompass everything that Team Unicorn is about and be able to tell stories in really fun ways um, that I hope people respond to. As for me, I have um, two different movies coming out and I am going to be shooting another movie in May um, one of the movies that I did is a little um, 
I mean, I guess you could say it's a cop and robbery movie called The Insomniac, and it's, uh, I'm in it, and John Hurt is in it, and Danny Trejo, and, um, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. That's an um, incredible cast just right there. Yes. Wow. Um, it'll be fun. I can't believe that I'm... I'm drawing a blank on the lead actor's name. He also wrote it. He's very, he's a very nice young man. Um, it, I'll email you. Oh, <laughs> no, no problem. No, no, that that's great. That that is wow, wow. Okay, looking forward to that one. And what was the other one you were working on, or was coming out? The other one is a movie that I shot um, called Joshua Tree, 1951, the uh, portrait of James Dean, and it's it's shot on black and white, 35 millimeter film. So oh wow. Just beautiful. And it's starring James Preston as James Dean, and it's about, like, Jimmy on his way to becoming James Dean and, you know, him searching for who he is. It's, it's, it's a really, really beautifully done film, and I'm so excited to be a part of it, even if it's just a small part. Um, and then I, I, just, um, I just accepted an, an offer for... Um, a ghost story oh. coming out, which will be really cool. I go to Chicago to film that in May. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's just a few hours north of here, so I might have to, yeah. I might have to, have to, have to uh, see if I can visit a set or something. Ha ha ha. I say that with a wink and a nudge. Uh, but no, that's awesome. Uh, I will definitely. Uh, I, I'm a huge ghost story fan. I have to say that. So I have, I think, uh, a little over a hundred. Different books on ghost stories. I collect ghost story books, so oh, wow. I'm a ghost that's fan. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm a nerd of many nerdisms, so that's one of them. So yes, that's very cool. I would look that's forward cool. to hearing that one. Okay, now we've gone through a long list here. So there's there's gaming, there's cosplay, uh, collectible card games, aka Magic the Gathering. Uh, right. There's there's uh, Lego, which which is something I found out via your Twitter feed that that you like and you've geeked out about before. Yes. What other things? Um, now, you mentioned the cooking, so that could qualify. But what other things do you, quote, geek out about that other people might not know you for? Um, and they don't have to be, quote, traditionally geeky either. Just things that you are passionate about that you, quote, geek out about. Well, um, I'm a cat nerd. <laughs> um, I know ridiculous information about all of the different pure breeds of cats. That's really nerdy of me, and I'm so glad that I'm married, because if not, I'd have, like, ten cats. <laughs> and you would be the cat lady. Yeah, I'd be bad. Um, Riley and I were joking about that just yesterday, actually, um, about her, about how she would also be the cat lady. Um, <laughs> let's see. What else? Um, wow. Um, I used to be... Uh, <laughs> There's so many things. I don't know. Um, when I was a, when I was younger, all through like elementary school and junior high, I was obsessed with the Chicago Cubs. Obsessed. My dad lived in Chicago, and so I would go spend summers with him, and he would take me to those games, and it would just be the highlight of my life. And I would wear. I had a full-on official Cubs uniform that I would wear to all of the games. And I had notebooks and notebooks and notebooks just full of baseball cards. And I was totally obsessed with buying baseball cards and collecting them and trading them and chewing that horrible gum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That qualifies. All right. So it's official. You were a, a Cubs, a Cubbies and baseball nerd. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time since I, you know, since I really actually paid attention to um, baseball, I kind of grew out of being a fanatic. I understand. Um, but uh, I still love them. I'm a Cubs fan too, and uh, I uh, I can understand. I couldn't tell you who's pitching or who's on the team this year. I did get out to Wrigley uh, a couple times last year, so it was fun, and I missed the park. But I understand. I understand getting older and, and having different interests. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, yeah. 
Well, that, that's awesome. And I, like I said, I, I can understand how that would be, be a good time for you growing up. And, yes, the, uh, I'm not sure if that was actually bubble gum or what that was in those baseball cards back in the day, but that, is, uh, that was horrible. I will say that. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Last last question I've got for you. Uh, actually, I take it back. That was that was a lot. I have two questions. I have two questions. Sorry. Because um, the last one the last one is near and dear to my heart. Uh, this this next one is is more generically for anyone listening in right now. And that is, um, you have a lot going on. That that is in itself an understatement. Is there anything else that you could maybe get a hint at? Uh, that you, a dream project, because you mentioned the TV show, which just sounds awesome. I can't wait to learn more about that in the future. But other than that, is there anything else, um, you know, as an actress or as a gamer, uh, maybe as a writer, I don't know, anything, any dream projects out there that you can sort of uh, hint at that's something you'd like maybe to do that's on your bucket list? Um, I mean, I always, I mean, I want to do, I really want to make an action movie. I've said that, you know, many times. <laughs> I really want to do that. I really just want to, like, you know, beat someone up on film and be awesome and save the day and jump out of buildings and, I don't know, jump out of planes. <laughs> That's awesome. I hijack a train. I mean, doesn't that sound like the greatest thing you could ever do? I want to I wanna do that. I mean, I, I think there's that and then there's going up into space, which is sort of a segue into my last question which by the way i think you've been an action film guaranteed blockbuster i think that's awesome huh, no problem and i'm being sincere i'm a fan and i have to say this everyone uh and i am biased and i say this before every interview everyone i have on the show i'm a fan of uh since it's my show i get to pick who's on there and i only pick people i'm fans of so i'm always biased so that's that's the first thing so i think that would be awesome um but my last question does involve space and that is if I remember correctly, you and your husband were the guests of NASA at a an event a while back. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, we actually um, we got to do two things. Um, we went to the we tried to well we went to we went to the last shuttle launch mm-hmm. for NASA. It went it was pretty awesome. We had tried to make a launch before that, but because of the weather, we didn't, the, the launch didn't happen. But while we were there, both times while we were there, we got to do the most amazing things that I never in my life expected to do, which was, you know, sit in the cockpit of Discovery oh. in Atlantis. I mean, oh. wow, who gets to do things like that? And I got to sign my name next to the wall where they dock the ships. So anytime you could go, they take those ships everywhere um, they, around the different, not everywhere, but they go on tours. They alternate between different NASA centers, and you can go, you know, and check out the ships and all the rest of the stuff that the, the centers have to offer, and you can see our names written next to there. And one of the times that we got to go was on our anniversary, our first anniversary, and it was so neat. And then we got to go back and watch the shuttle launch. I just, it was, I've been a, a NASA space nerd my entire life. I lived in Houston, Texas through junior high in the first half of high school. The school I went to was called the Space Center. It was practically <laughs> on NASA property. The whole town was basically a giant NASA endorsement. And it got me interested in space at a really young age. And I went to uh, Huntsville, Alabama as a kid for space camp. Oh, no, not you too. Thing. So oh. to be up and close to rockets and shuttles and meet astronauts. I got to, I got to meet astronauts. I got to, like, meet the... I can't, I can't even I can't even explain how joyous of an occasion those trips were for me. Very cool. I actually I had no idea that you actually grew up in Houston. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, a little shout out to some of the friends I know that are listening to this out in Houston. There you have it. I had no idea. What up? Very cool. Well, Claire, it has been an absolute pleasure. I have enjoyed talking with you. Uh, I know this has been several months in the working, uh, based on, on on your schedule, and I appreciate your patience and uh, and, and your time. I truly appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show. 
Um, no, it's been fun. It's been fun. I wish you uh, warm weather wherever you may find yourself in the next few days. Uh, yeah. And uh, and uh, take care and good luck on your projects. And we'll definitely keep tuned. Uh, what I will do on the website uh, is I will list. Uh, I will have a whole list of Claire's uh, future projects, links to them, uh, her IMD profile, how you can uh, follow her on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Team Unicorn links, etc., etc., etc. One stop shop. Claire, again, thank you very much and uh, I'm much appreciated.